The definition of feminism has changed over the decades, with various waves of the movement challenging the role of women in the workplace, home, and society. The church, however, is clear. Women are created in the image and likeness of God equal but unique from men. Writer Kate Bryan has done a deep dive into the subject of femininity. She's the author of Living the Feminist Dream, a faithful vision for women in the church and the world. She shares her own faith journey with us this week and joins us now from Miami, Florida. Kate, it's so great to be with you today. Monte, Your book, thank you so much for having me on the show. Absolutely. It's great to have you. Your book is this roadmap for redefining feminism, but also rediscovering femininity. And you bring in examples from women of faith who are secular and also women from the church. Tell us about this purposeful feminism that embraces God's plan. It really is a roadmap even of my own life, Monse. And I think any woman, whether in the church or in the world, we all have our own journeys and our journeys, each of our journeys are so important. And so that's really what I wanted to convey through this book. And it was my own journey as a single woman living in the church, a single woman living in the world and different experiences that I had where I saw uh, faux feminism, if you want to call it that, faux feminism played out in our culture, in our world. And I really wanted to grasp that as an individual woman and, and make it my own. And I think that is so many women in the world, so many women in the church, that we have that power to grasp it and make it our own and re really redefine feminism. Absolutely. And I know you discuss this in your book as well, but give us a preview. How did your journey in the church start? Were you always a woman of faith? I was born, my mom always talked about, Monse, that I was born with this little spark of faith. Some people write they find their faith, faith life uh, later on in life. And for me, I was a little kid and I would walk to mass if my parents weren't going. I would always pray the rosary and walk around with little rosaries as a four or five year old little kid. And so my mom always talked about how I was born with this little spark of faith. And then it was almost like pulling a thread little by little. As I got older, I went to Franciscan University of Steubenville and studied theology because I was really interested in my faith life. And then my faith just has continued to grow. My relationship with the Blessed Mother has continued to grow. And um I just think it's so important that, that we're constantly evolving, and that's what I really wanted to convey in my own life. I'm still learning. I'm still growing. No one is perfect. Um, we always can be better Catholics. We always can be better human beings in the world. And so I really, you know, one day at a time, and I'm still learning and growing, and I can't wait for the next book where I share the next chapter of my journey. Oh, that's beautiful. And I know that that is, it is a gift, faith. Um, and for some, it's given very early. So it's great to hear that that was your journey. In a very brave way, though, Kate, you outed yourself as a 32-year-old virgin in a Washington Post article five years ago to make a really important point uh, that you also make in your book about the beauty of singleness and chastity. What does the church tell us about the single life? we have a purpose. Like that's what the church really tells us about the single life. And, and it can be difficult. We can feel as single people, we can feel lost or alone. We feel like there, there's no one else out there like us. And especially when it comes to chastity, I think that's what the culture really encourages us to see. And sometimes we even feel that in the church where we don't feel like we have a community supporting us in the virtuous life, um, in chastity and other virtues as well. And for me, when I saw that, when I decided to write that Washington Post article, it really stemmed out of seeing two other Washington Post articles that were the complete opposite, people that were saying that chastity and abstinence were archaic. And I really wanted to redefine that. And I, I saw the gift of single life and the gift of chastity in my own life. I was able to do so many different things that I may not have been able to travel um, you know, and, and seize opportunities in my career, so many different things that, that that dedication to chastity really opened up opportunities in my professional and personal life. And that singleness really was a gift as well for that season in your life. Why do you think it was important then to write and publish this reflection on women and the church right now in this moment? In this moment, Monse, I feel like the world is so chaotic. We look at social media. There are so many different things going on in our world. Everything is so dark, right? Like every day I feel like we turn on the news and there's so many difficult, dark things that are going on. I'm from Michigan. I live in Michigan. I'm in Miami right now. But we had a, a tragedy in Oxford um, last week. And so there are so many heartbreaking things going on. But there are always moments for hope. We see God in so many little things in our lives, in our daily lives, in our daily journeys. And so it's so important to be reminded of that. And, and in the single life, sometimes we feel like we don't have a purpose or we don't have a voice. And I really wanted to 
write this book solely for the other individual single women out there to let them know that they're not alone and that they their journey has a purpose, they have a voice, and to encourage other women to, to share their value and share their dignity and share their purpose with the world. And Kate, when you think about your book and the impact it's going to have, what is that message then, that one thing you want people to take away? The one thing that I want people to take away is you have a purpose you are as unique as your fingerprint. And if you need to be reminded of that, look down at your fingerprint and remember that there has never been anyone like you who has that power to leave that specific imprint on the world. And there will never be anyone like you. So go out there and set the world ablaze. That's beautiful. Well, you're setting the, word of, uh, the world ablaze. And I hope that our viewers will pick up your book and enjoy your reflections as much as I did. Thank you so much, Kate. Thank you, Monse.